have your attention, please? It is a real joy to have with us this afternoon for the first time at Preparedness Expos, a gentleman whom I have heard of for a long time, but never personally heard lecture, but he comes with very high recommendations, John Quaid. But just before I introduce him, may I remind you again of the marvelous new publication put out by Dan Chittick and Preparedness Expos, Preparedness Journal. And you may pick up a complimentary copy, if you wish, as you go out of the auditorium just down the way from the entrance door to the Preparedness Expo, the third booth, you'll find complimentary copies of these. Be sure and pick up one. I hope you'll get a subscription. Now, may I remind you to keep in mind, as Mr. Quaid is lecturing in just a moment, that all of the speakers are being professionally audio and videotaped. Those tapes are available in a beautiful folder, which you may pick up a uh, enclosed all of the tapes in them, and they are available just outside of the door and directly to your right. I would suggest that you get all of the speakers for the entire weekend. You will want to review them in coming days. If you're like I am, you'll say a week ago, my, I wish I could hear that again. Now, there's a 20% discount on the audio tapes if you buy the entire set. So please be sure and get these just after you go out today. And keep in mind, as John Quaid lectures, that all of this you can take home with you. You not only hear him here, but you can take him home with you in the form of an audio or videotape. John Quaid is a well-known author, has appeared in more than 120 featured films, television shows, including Roots uh, and a number of other movies, uh, let's give a real hand of applause, if you will, to John Quaid. So good to have him at Preparedness Expo. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening to the resident alien subject slaves. Queen, Queen Hillary and her co-queen, Billery, <laughs> send greetings from Clintonia. <laughs> Turn out the lights, the new Camelot has arrived. I've often wondered, what does it feel like to be raped? You know, you, you I've seen Hollywood's idea of it, but, and I've even, you know, for money, done that once or twice myself, but I don't mean in that sense. I'm talking about being raped where it counts the most, intellectually and spiritually, and in your property, in your person. in your children, in everything you think you own. There's been a great deal of confusion in recent years concerning what the nature of the American system is. It always bothered me when I, you know, I'd hear these yahoos, you know, come out and talk about democracy and all these kinds of things and I I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not the brightest man in the world all right but I never pledged allegiance to any democracy and I never understood what they were talking about because when I read the philosophers Montesquieu Rousseau Voltaire the Enlightenment thinkers when I read Plato and Aristotle when I read all of these great minds and everything, I see that they nowhere discuss democracy in any sense that we know it today. And so when I begin to look at the current state of what we call the United States of America and compare it to democracy, I see no resemblance to what democracy really is because democracy is vox populi, vox dei, the will of the people is God, right? 51 people vote on a question, 
out of 100, it's law. Now, they can change their mind the next day and vote the other way, and that becomes just as valid a law as it was the first day. In the kind of democracy I see, on Monday it's illegal to murder. On Tuesday there's extenuating circumstances, of course. Now, on, well, well, on Wednesday there could be some... You see, the, the, there's some psychological problems here because of the upbringing. On Thursday, the uh, victim is accused of the crime, and on Friday, it becomes legal to murder. Now, that's what I see as a modern democracy, but then again, that doesn't have anything to do with politics. Now, if anybody in this room is not confused by this time as to what I'm talking about, then you come up here and make the speech, because everyone is supposed to be confused at this point. Because speaking out of both sides of our mouth is the classical, modern way of the politicians. When they talk about constitutional rights, they, do, they mean none of the rights given to us in the blood, sweat, and tears of the fathers when they gave us the Constitution. They mean none of those rights. They mean 14th Amendment privileges that can be given or taken away. Now, wait a minute. Rights, privileges, what's the difference? Very simply, rights come from God, privileges come from man. Choose this day whom he will serve. Choose this day under what kind of system you would prefer to live. Most people today, when they talk about rights, they, they mean it really in the terms of the right to sue that turkey for everything he's got. I mean, he ran over my brand new patent leather shoes. Well, that's a crime. I'm going to sue that turkey for everything. Of course, the attorney ends up with it all. You see. And then the guy comes back after he's gone through this long process, and he says, my rights have been violated by the attorney, except that I can't sue him. Well, you idiot. You sign a contract with an attorney, and you're automatically declared non compos mentis. And he says, non what? I said, non comp uh, uh you're not mentally competent. And he says, what? Well, my rights have been taken away again. Do you really know what your rights are? Do you know the difference between rights and privileges? Does anybody really know in America today? And are these worth fighting for, much less dying for? Well, let's put it this way. The fathers of our country understood the distinction. And we are supposed to stand on their shoulders. If they felt that it was worth dying for, then perhaps we ought to reevaluate our current stance. The guy was asking me the other night, very good friend of mine who's been in the battle with me for quite a while now. And he said, John, why don't we have any great leaders anymore? Because we don't deserve them. Lord Bishop Cranmer said in the 13th century, it takes a strong people to maintain a good society. Only a weak people can begat an evil society. Lord Bishop Cranmer's voice, voice from the grave, then stands as an indictment against every single one of us today. And everyone's talking about rights, when in reality, there's no person that I know of in this room who has any at least not according to the Constitution. You may have 14th Amendment rights, but those are all privileges granted by Congress. A privilege is something that can be granted and taken